have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way, thou art the potter, I am the clay, I'm glad you're here tonight. Look at somebody else say, most of all, I'm glad the Lord's here tonight. 
Well, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn it, you'll know a little fire is burning. And you'll find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn it, you'll know a little fire is burning. And you'll find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my past is real without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. Well, the mist of sin may rise and hide the starry skies. But just a little talk with Jesus, there's a way. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn it, you'll know a little fire is burning. And you'll find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears. My eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn it, you'll know a little fire is burning. And you'll find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Well, all right, all right, all right, all right. You'll find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Well, all right, all right, all right, all right. You'll find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. And look what the Lord has done. Well, look what the Lord has done. Well, he healed my body. He touched my mind. Well, he saved me just in time. Well, I'm going. Praise his name. Each day he's just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Well, look what the Lord has done. Yes, look what the Lord has done. Well, he healed my body. He touched my mind. Well, he saved me just in time. Well, I'm going to praise his name. Yes, each day is just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. One more time, let's sing it. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Well, he healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Well, I'm going to praise his name. 
Oh, each day he's just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Well, the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, Jesus is the God we serve. Oh, Jesus is the God we serve. Oh, the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, Jesus is the God we serve. Oh, Jesus is the God we God Almighty, God, we serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. God Almighty, God, we serve. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise, oh, praise Him! Praise the Lord! Praise Him! Hallelujah! 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 Oh, praise God! Anybody come in here with any black eyes tonight? Huh? Wounded? Anybody come fat lip tonight? Huh? Anybody wounded from fighting the devil? Huh? Come on. You get wounded now, but you never lose. Not with Jesus. Never lose. You'll never lose with Jesus. Praise God. Ain't God good? Ah, uh, so many people with COVID. So many things happening. Wow. Getting close to home. Been doing some praying and worrying. And I know worrying's not of God, but I'm not going to lie to you. I've been worrying. I want to protect my wife and protect my family. And I pray, God, keep my family safe. Keep my family safe through all this. Praise God. How many knows He can? Huh? That's right. You clap to him because you know he can. That's right. Praise God. There's a lot of folks that needs help. I'm sure there's people watching this by the internet that needs help. And I'm asking God to touch them. And if the brothers would all come down and get ready to pray for some folks that get ready to come up. And uh, I pray to God that people are watching by internet and the ones that can't come out to church and I pray to God that God touches them and helps them. I remember my mama couldn't come to church and my aunt couldn't come to church. And they, were, they both loved Jesus more than anything. They couldn't come to church. All they could do was watch the television. I pray to God that God touches them through the television. Praise God. Hallelujah. That His Word will come in and, and be sharper than any two-edged sword and help them and deliver them, set them free, cause them to cry, cause them to lift up their voice to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. I believe in prayer. Praise the Lord. Oh, my. 
Let's pray for them that has, let's pray for salvation right now. Uh, Vienna Mu uh, Mum Mumfords, uh, Stephanie Hell, David Barco, Bart Bartko, Amanda Huffman, Joe Bart Bartko, Jeff and Lisa Bartko, the whole family it sounds like, uh, Haven Gusman, uh, Barrett family, Stewart family, William Moore, uh, Deborah Schultz, Nick Popoff, uh, David Arthur, hmm, I wonder if that's the David Arthur I know, uh, Megan and Bobby Aggins, Pammy, uh, Pam Stanley, David and Missy Isom, uh, Robbie Wilt family, Kate Walls, Pam Taylor, Scott Perdue, Jeremy Walls, William Saxton, uh, Francis family, Rick Simmons, Debbie Bell, Dwayne Gill, Brittany Gill, Johnny Russell, George Francis. And let's pray for the family of Connie Ward in bereavement. Praise God. The Lord can do anything. He can touch them. How many feels that deep down inside of you right now? Amen. These folks need salvation and God can touch them. My mama one time prayed for me and wanted me to be touched by God. And uh, I was sitting in a jail cell and uh, had been in a lot of trouble. And my mother prayed a prayer. She got down beside her bed and she couldn't get to me and help me and do. My mama would have helped me if she could. She would have got me out of that jail if she could. But she got down beside her bed and she prayed and she said, Lord, let my son feel your spirit and get down beside his bed and pray. You know what happened that night? I didn't even know Jesus. I didn't know nothing about him. All I knew he was supposedly the son of God or whatever. You know, that's all I knew. You know what happened? My mom's prayer was answered because I had such a pulling on my chest. As a young man, 19 years old, I had such a pulling on my chest that I could not stand it. I had to get down beside my bed in that jail cell and pray. God can do anything. All you've got to do is speak the words and believe Jesus and say, Jesus, you can touch my son. Jesus, you can touch my daughter. He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. Praise God. Now you put that person in your mind right now. That one that you want God to touch you right now. You put that one single person in your mind right now. And you say, Lord, I know that you can touch that person. And let's pray right now. Father, God, I'm asking you, Lord, to move in a mighty way. And I'm asking you to touch my granddaughter, Liberty. God, I'm asking you, Lord, to move upon her. I'm asking you, God, to touch her. I'm asking you, Lord, to have her get down beside her bed tonight and pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Now you need to start praising him. You need to start praising him for what he's done for you. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Praise your name. Praise your name. Heavenly lover, let thy spirit. I'm in need is all I love for. Hallelujah. We don't speak to me softly while I need to pray. I'm in need. Yes, 
is all I've come for. Into thy chamber, sweet Holy Spirit, speak to me softly as I close the door. Let thy spirit hover, Shekinah, unending, is all I long for. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many know somebody that's sick right now? Just raise your hand. If you know someone that's sick, why don't you take the neighbor's hand beside you and agree together God's going to touch them and heal their bodies right now. Be specific in your prayer. Lord, you know those who are in sick in their bodies right now. Bill Blevins, God. We pray, God, you would heal him and touch him and make him whole, God. Touch Sister Harper and heal her body, God. You know the need, God, in her physically. Heal her. Touch Sister Barbara. Jackson, God, at home tonight, heal her, make her whole, God. Take away that pain, God. Give him a complete recovery. Brother Jackson, Lord, Lord, you do your work. Comfort those, God, who have lost their loved ones. Brother Ward, Annette and her family, God, I pray your comfort be upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, by your word and by your power. Somebody said in Jesus' name. Now put your hands together like you've already seen it happen. That God's already done the work. We're going to praise Him in advance tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, we serve a mighty big God. Ain't nothing too hard for God, amen. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated in the house of the Lord tonight as the ushers prepare to receive our tithes and offering. I want to remind you Thursday night, 7 o'clock, is prayer and a Bible study, a Bible lesson. Uh, come for that and uh, be a part of that prayer meeting. See what God can do. When you pray until something happens, something will happen. Amen. And we pray in faith, believing, and God will do the work. Amen. How many want to see God move in our church? How many want to see God move in our city? Amen. How many saw God move in your home? All right. Go ahead. Put your hands together. God will move in your home. Praise God. Simply obey the scripture. It says, if my people, which will call by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. And we got to get humble and pray sometimes. We think we can do it on our own. The arm of the flesh will not bring victory. But when you go in Jesus' name, my God, the Bible says, shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And I believe that tonight. So come to prayer meeting. God. All right. On Saturday, we're going to have a, a service, a funeral service for Sister Connie Ward. And please come from 12 to 1 for visitation. The funeral will be at 1 o'clock. And to come and support Brother Darren and uh, their family and uh, be in prayer for him. He loved his mama, as all men should. And just be in prayer for them. How many are going to agree to pray for that family this week? God bless them in Jesus' name. If you have your offering ready, now we're going to pray. God, I love you. Thank you, Lord, for your presence tonight in this house among your people. We ask you, Lord, you bless this offering for your work, for your service. Bless the gift and the giver, God, in Jesus' name. Everybody said, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me 
And he bought me with his redeeming blood. Well, he loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Well, he loved me and I knew him. All my love is due him. Well, he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Well, I heard of old, old story how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning of his precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Well, he loved me and I knew him and all my love. Well, he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, there's a preaching spirit here. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord. We had wonderful services over the weekend. Hallelujah. We did for a fact. We did for a fact. Would you like to stand with me? I, uh, I want the Lord to bless you tonight. I can help you with what God's got in store for you. I think you could go out of here feeling like you could face hell with a bucket of water and win. Hallelujah. Praise God. And uh, this, is a, th this is an awesome hour that we're living in, folks. It really is. It really is. Acts, the third chapter, verses 19, 20, and 21. A whole lot of places that a preacher could go, especially an apostolic preacher, by reading these verses of scriptures I'm about to read to you. Acts 3 and 19 says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out, and the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. I want you to know the Lord's got something planned for us. Hallelujah. And then Jesus made an announcement in his ministry. Matthew 23, verse 39, Jesus made this statement. He said, uh, you shall not see me henceforth, but you shall see, say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. What I want to take a little time for tonight is I want to preach to you for just a little bit. Preach, teach, preach. Somewhere, I want to talk to you about the restitution of all things. The restitution of all things. God bless you. You may be seated. He said that the heavens must receive him until the times of the restitution of all things. 
When we're talking about the restitution of all things, there's more going on here than meets the eye. First of all, there was a great promise made. The promise was that he led them out as far as Bethany, Luke 24, verses 50 and 51. He lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them that he parted from them, was carried up into heaven. The writer Luke picked up the story again in Acts the first chapter when he was writing to Theophilus, who was a lawyer, a friend of his, that, that some really believe this, and I tend to agree to them, that the man by the name of Theophilus, who was an attorney, the man by the name of Titus, who was the brother of Saul of Tarsus, and Saul of Tarsus himself, along with the man that became a fame by the name of Luke the physician, Many believe they all went to college together at the University of Tarsus. Is that true or not? That's what many believe. But he writes to his friend, Theophilus, because this man Luke has been introduced something that's bigger than he is. And so he wants to tell him, he said, I, I said you in the former th thesis that I wrote to you, the former treatise that I wrote to you, talking about the book of Luke. He said, now, he said, I'm, I'm writing you back. I'm going to tell you some more things that I've discovered. And so he writes to them and he says in Acts 1 verses 6 through 11, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Jesus said unto them, it's not for you to know the times of the season which the Father has put in his own power, but you're going to receive power. After the, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you're going to be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and in Huntington, West Virginia. Because at that time, this would have been considered the uttermost parts of the earth. Goes on to say this, and when he had spoken these things, and they beheld him, he was taken up with a cloud and received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly, while they beheld him and looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. He's coming back someday. He's coming back someday. And this man by the name of Peter heard that prophecy and was also a student of the Word of God at the feet of Jesus Christ. And he knew what Zechariah had already said. Zechariah had already said, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. And that day, that's that day that's talked about in the book of 2 Thessalonians. That day shall not come until a whole myriad of things in Luke 24 happens. But we're not talking about the rapture of the church. We're talking about the day when the Jesus Christ is revealed from heaven. And when he comes back, he says, I'm going to gather all nations together against Jerusalem. The city's going to be taken, the houses rifled, the ribbon ravished. The half of the city shall go into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth, it says, and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand. This is Zechariah 14 and 4. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem. That's when the mountain cleaves in the middle and creates what's going to be called the Battle of Armageddon. I want you to know, this is when the Bible says, when he returns, every eye shall see him, and everyone that has pierced him shall behold him. When he comes back and stands on that mountain, what gives him the privilege to come back is he has done his work as our intercessor, as our advocate, as our high priest, as our daysman. Come on now, somebody let me tell you something. Right now Jesus Christ is fully at work. I want to tell you something else. Jesus Christ has not sat down yet. 
He's working. I said he's standing up. He's working. He is our intercessor. You see, when we get in trouble, we have an advocate with that th throne. We've got it, Jesus Christ. He's standing in the place of the power of God. You please? And so it is, but the day's coming when he's coming back. It was prophesied. That's right. The man with the name of Moses prophesied it. Acts 3, verses 22 and 24. For Moses truly said of the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, and, and him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever she shall say. And it shall come to pass. This is, what, this is what's going to happen when the Lord comes back and he's restored all things. Every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. And all the prophets from Samuel, all of those and likewise, have foretold of those days to come. That was part of the prophecy, you see, when John the Baptist was about to be born. Luke, the first chapter, verses 67. There's a whole plethora of promises here about Zechariah. If you come down to the 70th verse, he said he spake it by the mouth of his holy prophets, which has been since the world began. Verse 71 said that he was coming to save us from our enemies and from the hands that hate us and to perform the mercies of promise and to remember his holy covenant, which he swore to his fathers. I want you to hear me tell you more. He said we shall be delivered, verse 34, out of the hands of the enemies and we're going to do it Listen to me. Listen to what I'm about to say. Everybody talks about this thing. You Pentecostals carry this thing, holiness, too far. Don't you know you can do what you want to, go what you want to, act like you want to, and everything will be all right? That's not the way God's going to execute it. The Bible says in verse 75, it's in holiness and righteousness before Him all the days of our life. Now as a result of that... <laughs> We can identify our Father. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You see, I'm standing here tonight. A Heinz 57. I sent my DNA out and it came back. And you might as well pulled all of the spices off the rack and mixed it up in the mess. But, but I've known for years that I had a Native American in me. I knew there was some Scotch-Irish in me. But you know, maybe the reason I got a little breath, little rhythm in me, there's some Africa in me too. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I just want you to know something. I am a bona fide Gentile. Yes. But when I came to Jesus and I began to believe in Jesus Christ, I was adopted into the family of Abraham. And now the Bible says... In that Galatians 3 and 29. And then are you Abraham's seeds and heirs according to the promise. Ah. The scripture gives us that 13th chapter. It's the 13th chapter when this awesome message by this Saul of Tarsus begins to be preached. He begins to talk in Acts 13 and 17. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers. It's not an accident that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were the fathers. They were chosen of God. The Bible says in verse 19 that whenever that the children of Israel went into the land of Canaan and they destroyed the seven nations in the land of the Chaldeans, then God divided the land among them. He gave them judges. The next verse says, that's right, verse 20 says, He gave them judges for a space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. Then he gave them a captain of the host by the name of, of Saul, if you please, for some 40 years. Then after that 490-year period, he removed Saul, the Bible says, and he chose a man after his own heart, a man whose seed would become the one that would give the world Jesus Christ, the Savior. So it was. When all of this was going around, John the Baptist came. Verse 26 says that it was preached to the men and the brethren and the children of the stock of Abraham. And then he went on to say, For they that dwell in Jerusalem, they turned on that one that was promised, and they brought him death at the cross of Calvary. They nailed him to a tree. 
they took him down from a tree. Verse number 39 says they laid him in a sepulcher. But I got good news for you. That same Jesus that they crucified was raised from the dead and made both Lord and Christ. God raised him from the dead. He spent time, seen many days of them that were with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. And he declared, and God has fulfilled the same for us and has raised up Jesus again. Like that second Psalm said, he was my son. This day I've begotten him. Verse 34 said he raised him up. And he said that he wasn't going to be corrupted. And uh, he said, I'm going to give to him the sure mercies of David. Let me tell you what the sure mercies of David was. And that was that God made a promise that his seed was going to sit on the throne of Jerusalem. Not only that, but the day is coming when Jesus comes back. He is going to, after the battle of Armageddon, he is going to sit down on the throne of David in Jerusalem and he's going to rule the world from there. Yeah, the promises of God. And he said, thou shalt not see for thy holy one to see corruption. And so he, he said, but David, he served his generation. Yes, he did. Verse 37 said, but he whom God raised up saw no corruption. And with that, he brings us a message. Do you know why I'm a part of Abraham's covenant and seed? It's because I came to Jesus. I settled it all. I'm going to say that. When I came to Jesus, I settled it all. I said, when I came to Jesus, I settled it all. And the good thing about it, it doesn't matter what you've done wrong. It doesn't matter where you are out there on the internet tonight watching. I've got to tell you something. I don't care if you come from an alternate lifestyle. I don't come, care if you come from a whorehouse. I don't care if you come from, a, from, a, from a, a drug pusher. I don't care if you're a thief in jail. Listen, there's a mama somewhere tonight praying for some other boys that are in jail and they're going to be getting down beside their beds and praying too. Y'all, y'all listen to what I'm telling you. I don't care if you come out of a beer joint. I don't care if you was the number one car thief in the city. I want you to know something. It doesn't matter where you come from, friend. When you come to Jesus and you repent of your sin, he has that mercy. So verse 39 says, and when we believe that, we're justified. We're justified. We're justified. You know, we know what the Ten Commandments say. And there's a good chance that there's enough of us in here tonight that if we all stood up and testified, all ten of them got broke in this house. Oh, but I'm here to tell you something. There's something about the mercy of God with repentance of sin and belief in Jesus Christ and the accepting of His blood washing and the infilling of His Spirit and being born again. When you become all of that, you become a part of Abraham's seed. Yes. But if you don't want to do that, everybody say, if you don't want to do that. Yeah. All of, I used to have a common word when I was evangelizing. This next announcement's for all you hard headed sinners. If you don't want to bow your knee, uh, I want you to know you may not bow it down here. Uh, I said, you may not bow it down here, but God has given him a name that is above every name. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue's going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. So beware, therefore, verse 40 of Acts 13 said, Lest that come upon you which is already spoken of the prophets. What was that? They're going to be destroyed. And he said, when it comes to pass, I'm going to do a, a in your day, I'm going to do a work that some of you will in no wise be able to believe. What are they talking about? Talking about that judgment that was coming. You see, Jesus before he went to Calvary, he sounded one last alarm 
for all of the people of Israel. I think it probably was very productive because I'm not sure that everybody wanted to see Jesus go to the cross of Calvary. Uh, the Pharisees wanted him to go. Scribes wanted him to go. Sadducees wanted him to go. I don't think everybody in Jerusalem wanted him to go. I don't think everybody in Israel wanted him to go. I, I'm, I'm, sure that the, I'm sure that the mom and dad from the wedding feast of Cain of Galilee, they didn't want him to go. I'm sure that the widow of Nain, who he gave her back your son, I don't think she wanted it. Jarius didn't want him to go. I want, you to, I want you to hear me. In that crowd, the Bible says that the women wept bitterly when they saw Jesus Christ fall beneath that cross. I, I, not everybody. but, but for the, so, so for everybody that was in Jerusalem, he sounded one more alarm in Matthew 24 and 1. He said, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. This was after he had just said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how oft would I have gathered you together under my, uh, unto me as a hen doth gather her chicks under her wings. But you would not. So he took them out and he stood on that Mount of Olives. He looked down at that city, that gorgeous temple. You know, Solomon, Solomon's temple was beautiful. It really was. The one that Zerubbabel put back probably was not as elaborate. There wasn't the storms, the resources to do it that Solomon had. But do you realize that for 13 years, the man by the name of Herod worked on rebuilding the temple of Solomon and decorated it in such a fashion that history tells us, and I stood and listened to a historian lecture in the city of Rome as he turned around and he pointed to the, to the arch of the Titus, Titus the, the, the general that conquered Jerusalem, and then he pointed to the Colosseum, and he said this. He said, a lot of people don't realize it, but when Titus came back from Jerusalem, after that he went in and destroyed the temple, he took all of the gold that Herod had put back in there and brought it to Rome, and that's what he paid for the building of the great Colosseum. That's rather unique. This man, Herod, and so Jesus is standing, looking down at this elaborate, ornate, beautiful temple, and this is what he had to say. He said, you see those buildings of the temple? See you not these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And then, and then you've got to understand something. After all of that preaching that Paul did, that he did, the Gentiles wanted the message, but the Jews, they went out of the synagogue. The Gentiles besought him that he would preach to them the next, the next week. Here's what I want you to know something. Jesus spent several verses in the book of Matthew, the 23rd chapter, telling, telling the Sadducees and the Pharisees what kind of religious creeps they were. That's the nicest way to say it. But they were creeps. They were lowlifes. They were all polished up, dressed good. They had all their proper manners of the religious protocol. But he told them, he said, you guys are hypocrites. He said, you'd shut up heaven against men. You won't go in, neither will you suffer others to go in. He said, you're fools and you're blind. And you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what's greater, the gold or the temple. And it's the temple that sanctifies all of that gold that's in it. Wherefore, you are witnesses unto yourself. You're the children of the very men that killed the prophets that God sent you trying to get you ready for me to come. And then he said, you're serpents. <laughs> You're a generation of vipers. And I want you to know something. He said, how can you, acting like you've acted, living like you've living, hypocrited around like you've hypocrited around, how can you escape, he says, the damnation of hell? And so he said, your house is left desolate. See, he said, from henceforth, he said, I'm talking to you today, but you're not going to see me again until I come back in the clouds of glory. 
When I come back in the clouds of glory, you're going to see me. And I'm going to settle the account. I'm going to settle the account. All those prophets said when he come back, he's going to settle the account with this old world. Hey, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. All of the educators and the members of intelligentsia that want to try to minimize Jesus Christ, minimize religion, minimize the morals that are set down in the Bible, you go going to heaven and just have a good time at it. But there is a settling day coming. Yeah. It's going to be thrown down. You know, It's interesting though, we're a part of the unsearchable riches of the Lord. That he, Paul wrote and he told them, he said, I'd like to show you the fellowship of the mystery. This thing's been in effect since before the world began. That's what he said in Ephesians 3. And so here's this temple. Now you get this. Jesus is going to stay out of sight in the courts of the temple in heaven until the restitution of all things. The things that have been destroyed on this earth are going to be put back. The temple was destroyed in 70 AD. But before Jesus comes back to the battle of Armageddon, the temple is going to be restored. Isn't that interesting? But then there's some other things that's going to be restored. You see, everybody say devil. Say it loud. Say it real loud. Lucifer, we just wanted you to know we know who you are. We also want you to understand something. We know what you're not. We know you're not almighty. We know that you're not powerful. We know that you're not second to the power of God. Evil, you're all of that. Hateful, you're all of that. I want you to know something. We also know something else about you. You are a thief. You are a killer. You do nothing but want to steal, kill, and destroy. That's your whole agenda. We know that. You've been upset since God tossed you out of heaven. Y'all hear what I'm telling you? But there's just one of him. Oh, there's a lot of demons. But Lucifer himself, the Bible used this in statement. It said that he used the measure of a man, or that is the cubit of an angel, or that is the measure of a man. Which means that since Lucifer is a fallen angel, who's the tallest guy in here? Probably, I don't know, it'd be between Tim and and. Brother Davis down here. Uh, I don't know though. We got a pretty good one sitting over here in Devon. Yeah. Yeah. How's that? And Brother Arthur's a long drink of water too. Yes, sir. And then if, then if we'd bring Jonathan down out of the out of the video, he, he'd be another one. But but even at that, they're all under seven foot. Yeah. measure of a man. And you know what they tell me about me? I used to be six foot. They measured me the other day and I was five foot ten and a half. The doctor looked at me and he said, Ed, you're getting shorter. I said, oh doc, I couldn't be. He said, what do you mean? He said, the tape measure don't lie. I said, something's lying. I said, I'm getting taller and my legs are getting longer. He said, what makes you say that? I said, every moment I go to get up out of a chair, it's getting farther from my seat to my feet than it's ever been before. But even at that, at my glorious height of six foot and no inches, you know what? If you run a tape measure from my tall finger on that hand to my tall finger on that hand, that's how tall you are. So if Lucifer is 
seven foot, then the farthest that he can reach from where he is is just his arm's length. Y'all still with me? But, but, but the preacher said it well Sunday, that he is a roar, he goes about as a roaring lion. And you know, I think the reason that the devil in Hollywood, that they identify so well with each other is because back both of them are actors. In fact, they're just pretending. They're putting on a show. Uh, that's what they're doing. They're pretending to be something that they're not. Can you imagine Elizabeth Taylor, when she was alive, being betrayed as a loving, virtuous wife? That was all pretend. Y'all still with me? I said, that was all pretend. The devil goes about as a roaring lion. He's shouting at you. He's teasing at you. He's lying to you. He'll tell you things that are no way possible. He tries to bring up your past. All you got to do is bring up his future. Hallelujah. We're going up. You're going down. Hallelujah. But, but, but when he left heaven, he left heaven as a thief. You see, in heaven, he was decorated, Ezekiel 30, 28 says, in verse 13, he was decorated with the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, or the Christopheris, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sardis, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. And when he left heaven, he took all of those jewels with him. He stole them. Right out of the courts of heaven, he stole them. Not only did he steal that, he stole the choir because he was one that led the song of the morning. All the angels that sang, he took them with him. And I want you to know something. Since the devil has executed and left heaven, there hasn't been a song in heaven. There's no song in heaven. It's gone. It left with Lucifer. The choir left. The music left. The one that played the dulcimer and the pipes and so forth, that all left. When he left, there's no song up there. So he stole, the, he stole the jewels, he stole the song, he stole the music. Somebody said, but Brother Harper, in fact, I'm going to tell you something. Angels don't sing. All the singing angels fell to earth. Yeah, praise God. Just, just get a good, good grip on it. And uh, they fell to earth. So there's a great big choir loft up there in heaven and it's been empty since Lucifer left. Yeah, it has. But I want you to know something. There's somebody going back. Uh, he said in Revelation 21, verse 9, that the angel said, come here. I want to show you the lamb's wife. I want to show you the lamb's wife. And let me tell you something. When you get to talking about the lamb's wife in Ephesians 5 and 25, he tells us, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. Because verse 27 says that he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot, wrinkle, or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's right. This church, this church, in spite of the fact that the devil stole all of those riches out of heaven, the church is going back. Yes, it is. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family of heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breath. Uh, let, me, let me tell you something. Remember something? When they measured the city of Jerusalem, they measured the breadth of it, the length of it, and the height of it. And if you're going to see the bride, 
then you've got to be able to comprehend what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height of the church. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able, uh, let me tell you what, don't you count God out on anything in supplying the need of the church. Unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, all that you're able to ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Yeah? Everybody say the church is going back. Come on, say it loud. Unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all the ages, world without end. Now, here we go. I've got a rich Jesus. I've got a rich Jesus. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Yeah. But if I go away, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. And here's what's written. I have not seen. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Peter looked at the Lord and he said, if you don't forsake all of this rich young ruler, turn your back on it and come serve me, you can't enter into the kingdom of God. Peter looked at him and he said, Lord, but what about us? We have forsaken all to follow you. And he said to Peter, Peter, he that has forsaken houses, lands, mothers, fathers, sisters, and brothers, for my name's sake, to him shall be granted a hundredfold in this world and eternal life in the world to come. Yes, yes. Now, now just, just listen to me. When the devil left heaven, y'all hear me? He stole the song. He stole the gold. He stole nine jewels out of heaven. Yeah, he did. But I told you that the church was going back. And when the church goes back, the church is taken more back with it that the devil took out. I'm going to say that again. I said the church has taken more back to heaven than the devil took out. Because when, the, when John the Revelator is looking at the church, he sees a church that's adorned with jasper, one, sapphire, two, third, chalcedony, fourth, an emerald. Come on now. Fifth, a sardix. Sixth, a sardis. Seventh, a chrysolite. Eighth, a beryl. Ninth, a topaz. Tenth, a chrysophorus or diamond. And eleven, a jason. And the twelfth, the amethyst. Hey, did you count? The devil took nine out, but the church has taken twelve back. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when the church gets back to that glorious place, not only, you see, the devil took the song out, but you know what we're doing right now? The reason it's important for you to sing with all your might in church service, the reason it's important for you to worship with all your heart in church service, is ladies and gentlemen, this is just choir practice. Y'all missed what I said. This is just choir practice. When we get to that city and the choir is assembled, we are going to take the song back to the courts of heaven and we're going to be singing the song of Moses and the Lamb. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it is that this church on earth is where that you are tried as gold in the refiner's fire. And when he's coming back, he's coming back to make up his jewels. That happens to be you. The final act of the restitution of all things is that when it all gets in place, the rapture's taken place, the judgment seat of Christ has taken place, 
The church is set down at the marriage supper of the Lamb. This world has gone through hell on earth while the things are in. There will, of course, though, be the restitution of the temple on earth. There's going to be a lot of things take place on earth, yes. But then Jesus Christ is coming back to the battle of Armageddon. And when he does, he's bringing the church with him. And every eye shall see him. They'll behold him. So you're sitting here tonight, and some of you, because of just hardship of life, you feel have a defeated feeling sometimes. Don't have a defeated feeling. Square your shoulders. Keep your eye on the eastern sky and say, I belong to him. How many of you, how many of you recently have been to a cemetery, to a graveyard? Been there? Lots of us have. You you do realize that the custom of the Christian church is to bury all of the bodies of the saints with their feet to the east and their heads to the west. You're aware of that? That's a common custom. Now, now Job told you why. He said, that day I shall arise. He said, I'll stand on the earth for myself. But he said, I'm going to see him face to face. Why would they have their feet to the east and their heads to the west? Because the Bible says when he does come, he's coming out of the east. As the lightning cometh out of the east and goeth into the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And when the church stands up, they're going to be looking at their Savior. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God. And you're here tonight. You're here tonight. There's going to be a terrible price paid at the Battle of Armageddon. Horses are going to run to the, blood's going to run to the horse's bridle. It's going to be all of those 200 miles long, that wide valley. It's going to be a terrible time. All the armies of the world are coming. They're going to be there. I think it was well said by the man of the name of Einstein. He said, I do not know all that will be implemented in the next great world war. But he said, what I do know is this. There will be no weapons except primitive weapons when we get to the final battle of Armageddon. But when it comes, it's going to be a bloodbath for this whole world. Let's stand together. The restitution of all things going to put it back together in heaven, put it back together on earth, yeah, and then he's coming to sit on the throne of David and rule the world for a thousand years. Turn around and look at the person next to you and say, I don't know whether you're a king or a priest, but you're going to look mighty good. We're going to rule and reign with him as kings and priests for a thousand years. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's just step out and make our way down to the front. Brother Koonsman's going to come right now and close the service. Would you bring all the challenges you've got. Square your shoulders and know something. The devil may be a thief and a robber. But you're going back as the jewels of the glory world. Praise God. Brother Kuzman. It may be night or noon. We know he's coming soon. Oh, he's coming. With joy, we'll welcome His returning. It may be morning, it may be night or noon, but we know He's coming soon. Why don't you 
close your eyes and raise your hand. If you're unsure, if you're ready, just start singing this song and praying unto God. He's coming soon with joy. We welcome his return. Oh. singing the song of the redeemed. Ah! Look at somebody and said, you're redeemed tonight. You're redeemed. You're redeemed. Let's just praise the Lord for right now. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, for Jesus. your blood. Redeemed by the blood Thank divine. you for redeeming us. Oh, just, oh, just over, over in, in the glory, glory land. land. There we yes, the mighty host I'll stand. Just over, over in the, the glory, glory land. land. Oh, just over in the glory land, there with the mighty host I'll stand. Just over in the glory land, oh, just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angel band. Just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land. There with the mighty host I'll stand. Just over in the glory land. And as I journey through the land, I'll singing as I go. I'm pointing souls to Calvary, to the Prince of Glory. Well, many arrows pierced my soul from without within. But my Lord leads me on, through him I must win. And oh, I want to see him look up on his face. Oh, there to sing forever of his saving grace. And on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Hope cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. I'm ready for that great getting up morning. Woo! The trump of God shall sound. The dead in Christ are going to rise first, and we which are alive and remain Hallelujah. shall be called up to meet him in the air. And the Bible says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Yeah. Looking forward to that day. No more trouble. No more trials. No more anxiousness. No more fear. No more pain. That's what he said. No more pain. No more out. John said there'll be no more tears. No more tears. No more. How many have been crying a little bit here lately? Yeah. There'll be no more of that anymore. No more tears. Praise God. Before we dismiss tonight, does anyone have a special need you want to come before me prayed for? I want to remember Debbie and Junior Adkins. Debbie and Junior Adkins. Who have COVID. Let's pray for them before we leave. Praise God. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, touch Jesus. Debbie and Junior Adkins, Lord, and heal their bodies of this COVID. Jesus. We pray, Lord, you'd give them strength. Jesus. Make them completely whole in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Pray, clear up their lungs if there's any lung problems. All these joint pain, the God, name fever of Jesus. might be there. We pray, Lord, you touch them and heal them. In the Jesus name of Jesus name. Christ. In the name of Thank Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Well, you all can go if you want to go. Funeral service Saturday. Saturday, 12 to 1 is 12 visitation. 12 to 1 visitation. That's right. 1 o'clock is the funeral. God bless right. you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The restitution of all.